All right, good morning, everybody. Um, this is a roundtable discussion on how we're going to connect emergency management into community media. Um, it's a kind of a big spread out group. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of talk a little bit for the first half just about emergency management. I introduce myself, uh, what we do at Peabody TV. And then we have a lot of questions for all of us to kind of ponder as to how we can bridge this gap. Um, part of the presentation is um, going to be done with a survey that I had done with emergency management officials. Not just what we can provide for them, but what do they want from us? And then once we've identified what those needs are, how can we fill those needs? So it should be a very good, uh, very good session. We need more people. Um, so just a little bit about Peabody Access. Um, we have five full-time, two part-time staff. Um, ben Meadows in the back, I want to thank him. He's our production coordinator. He's filming uh, along with, uh, uh, from Hartford. <laughs> we also have uh, two part-time staff. We have a part-time editor, a part-time facilities coordinator. And we also have a graphic design person um, as a contractor who I can't thank him enough, uh, Derek Gavain, who actually redesigned the presentation to what it looks like today. So he did a lot of work uh, on that yesterday for us. Um, we have a lot of interns, work study students, high school students that actually get paid uh, for helping us out doing programming for uh, the Educational Access Channel. Um, we have three channels, um, full peg. Um, we are currently in license negotiation, so we're hoping to get that uh, resolved very shortly. And we're um, constantly being recognized with a lot of the awards and stuff that we do. So. Just a little bit about me. I've been doing community media since the late 90s. Um, I started out as a high school volunteer. I went to Emerson College, got a, a BA in TV video, and started working in Danvers for about eight years before coming to Peabody five years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm also an active amateur radio operator, and I do a lot of emergency communications, uh, both for events and actual day-to-day -day things that happen, uh, including weather and I work with the City of Peabody Community Emergency Response Team as a volunteer. I handle a lot of their communications. So my background kind of bridges both of these fields together. All right, so we're all familiar with some of these traditional things that I'm sure most of us have done at some point, correct? We've all done billboard, um, bulletin board messages. Maybe you're giving your emergency management staff a login so that they can access the information directly and post it, and you're simply facilitating an approval process. Um, one thing that uh, we're doing in PBD that's a little bit different is PBD now has digital bull, uh, billboards as of about a year. And part of the digital billboards, um, the contracts that they've set up with the city, is we help create content for those billboards. And there's municipal space that's allowed. So emergency management in the city knows that we can do this. So these are just a few of them that we've put up. And they're covered on major highways, uh, US Route 1, I-95. People can see these messages when something goes on. Um, and it, it's not necessarily a set schedule. It's just so many in the rotation that they would put it up. Maybe it's every 5, every 10. If it's an emergency, they put it up more frequently than others. Um, obviously, last winter we had a lot of stuff with snow that went up in states of emergency. How many are familiar with the four aspects of emergency response? So this is an emergency management paradigm, so to speak, that we can help with on every level. So people in the emergency management field start by preparing for an incident. They're always planning, they're meeting, they're discussing what can we do if something impacts our community. From preparedness and making those plans, they respond to the incident and deal with it. That's, that's kind of what we see the most of, is when something happens. After the incident has passed, there's a recovery period where it's getting the community back to normal. And then they meet and they decide how they're going to mitigate what happened, lessen it in intensity, so that way, when we go back into the planning phase, you're preparing again just for a lesser impact, hopefully, if the plans go well. Okay, so we're, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to talk a little bit about knowing your EMD, and your EMD is your emergency management director. And he's the one that wants to know who you are, or she, um, who you are and what you can do 
before the incident. You want that meet and greet to happen well in advance because when the incident actually happens, they're too busy dealing with that incident to make that connection. So it's very, very important to make that connection. Um, part of what I do in Peabody with the CERT team that's there is I've made that connection back in 2006 and I can certainly tell you it is still an educational process to this day. Um, even yesterday, Peabody made the news again, there was something happening downtown and still made that phone call that said, hey, it, you know, it's Jim, do you guys need anything from us? Do you need us to post something? We don't know what's going on. Can you give us some information? And you know, it's, we'll get back to you and let you know, but at least they know that partnership's there, but they still don't know that full capability just to make that phone call to us and say, hey, we need you to do something. And it's, it's constant education. EMDs are busy. They may have more than one job. It may not be their only job. Um, they talk about a need, <coughs> excuse me, from time to time. And I'll have an example of that for you momentarily. But how do you transform those needs into media? And the example that I have is I was in our EMD's office last winter, just socializing, checking in, seeing what was up. And he was talking about how the fire department is having a lot of trouble getting people to shovel out their fire hydrants. So I said, what can we do for you to help? And the result was a PSA, which I'll show you in a moment, that really went viral in the community really quickly. Um, communities have um, a SEMP plan, Comprehensive Emergency Management Plan. It's basically a playbook for emergencies. It may not be um, fully written, but it's a developed set of plans somewhere that tell people how they're going to respond. And a goal may be to try to get involved in that if you can become part of that response. And again, that goes with knowing your director and being able to um, associate um, what's going on. CERT teams, as I mentioned, community emergency response teams, great thing to volunteer for. They're always looking for volunteers. And if you're a volunteer on the CERT team, you tend to be a little more into the know as to what's going on, which gives you another level of, okay, I'm seeing this, they're asking for help here, what can I do to turn around and make our community media centers help in that response? Um, winter storms last year were, you know, working up at the city's emergency center. Someone would come in and talk about um, people needing contact information for down trees and wires, so I can turn around then and say, hey, I can log in and post that. Do you want a message up? Most times they say yes. Are they gonna be proactive and call us? Maybe not, but having us there as part of the team certainly helps. So, and you need to know your emergency management director's goal. Is he more focused on preparedness? Is he more focused on response, education? Each focus is different. And knowing that focus is gonna help you make that connection a lot easier. So here's that um, fire hydrant PSA I'm gonna show real quick. Um, 534 views, it was shared numerous times. It's a short piece and you'll find in the survey results that we'll share shortly, emergency management loves short pieces. Really quick things that educate, get the message across and can create this type of reaction. Um, it was being shared constantly and passed on. And it just, it went viral real quick because of the message. Um, so just one example of things that we can do. So what's an incident? An incident is an event. Anything at all could be an incident. It doesn't necessarily have to be a life or death emergency. Incidents are anything. And it's possible for all of us to become trained in managing incidents, which help us to better understand what the directors are going through to help us respond to them. There's free training on the FEMA website. Um, if you look up ICS 100, 
take you about an hour online, probably less. You're going to learn about what an incident commander does to respond. And incident commanders are important to know because they're the ones that are responsible for the incident. And it may not be the same person every time. If it's a fire, your point of contact could be the fire department, hopefully. If it's a law enforcement issue, it's not going to be the fire department. It's going to be the police department. So that changes. And this system expands and contracts based on the incident. Media becomes more of a priority as the incidents start to grow and expand. So you need to find who your spokesperson is. Could be the emergency management director, could be the mayor, could be somebody else, could be somebody you're not even aware of. They just sent it down the food chain and now you've got another spokesperson. So identifying that person early as well is helpful so that in an incident you know who they are. You're not trying to figure it out. How many know if your community has an emergency operations center? A few? Okay. An EOC is basically a hub. It's one representative of every community agency in the same room to coordinate an incident. So you have a police person, a fire person, public service, um, anybody, health department, communications, everybody's together trying to respond to the incident unified. How can we help in this process? Does anybody know if they have a live origination point at their EOC to do updates? A couple? A couple? Good. How about taping an update? You need to know where your EOC is and who's in charge of it before you show up at the door. That's the best advice I can give. As long as they know you're coming, they can let you in. But if they don't know you're coming, they tend to lock it down and be very secretive. True, yeah. <laughs> um, also, communities may have a backup EOC, which is another location if the primary point is where the incident is. So just be aware of that and know what the backup location. So in Peabody, public services is where our primary is, but our backup is City Hall. So if something happens either direction, we know where that is. Could you have somebody on staff volunteering or, or getting paid or sitting in that room helping to update the community bulletin board as messages come out if it's a big, big emergency? Or can you do it remotely? Just things to think about, things that help. So, We've all heard about the LEPC, Local Emergency Planning Committee. It's different than emergency management on face value. And LEPC, a lot of people hear about LEPC and trying to get involved in it. It deals with hazardous chemicals primarily. It's not necessarily your emergency response unit in your community. Can you become part of it? You probably could. Um, there is media representation. And there's also community group representation. Um, PBD's EOC was up in, um, uh, the LEPC was up in 2012 uh, for about six to eight months. And we were represented on it really briefly. And then it went dormant again. They basically got active, updated the hazardous chemicals worksheet, and went dormant again. Contact your emergency management director for information. There's brochures out. Um, there's a Massachusetts guide that's a free download that will certainly educate you on the LEPC, tell you what it is, but again, it's primarily hazardous materials, hazardous chemicals, not necessarily day-to-day uh, -day events and emergencies. So, all right, so I wanna get into the survey. And this is where we're gonna have a lot of discussion points. Um, what I've tried to do is give you a brief background in emergency management. So we sent this survey out, um, it went um, pretty wide reaching. We got one response from California. Um, it was a combination of urban, suburban areas, um, 10 total responses, population varied. We had um, Springfield. We had back down to just a small community with just 10,000 people. What did they say? Well, 80% are aware of a community media center, but only 60% use it. So let's try to figure out why that is, okay? All right, so how are they currently using us? Developing PSAs for sure. Um, emergency manager community outreach. They're promoting their events. Uh, they're doing emergency notifications. 
Uh, they're doing some weekly programs uh, in one community. There's FEMA PSAs that are uh, being used, bulletin board and crawl messages. So again, the traditional stuff that we're aware of are being used, and that's great news. They know it's there, they're able to use it. But why aren't they using us? And I wanna kinda have a round table about some of this. One concern is the cable doesn't function. So why are they gonna go to us if a large portion of the cable in their community is out? They don't look at it as a reliable source. Someone else says, I don't know fully what they can do for emergency preparedness, and I don't know what segments of the population they reach. And another person said, I'm not even sure if there is one. Um, we're in a rural community, and I'm not sure that the reach will help us get to the population. Um, and I did a little Google search on that community, and there is a community media center there. All right, so let's look a little bit at what emergency management directors want to see community media centers do. And as we're looking at these survey results, you know, especially as we start getting to these later sections, you're gonna see a lot of conflicting information. And that's, again, 351 cities and towns in Massachusetts, nine Massachusetts communities responded, and they all have different views. So they wanna see uh, utilizing resources to get overall preparedness messages out and they're focusing more on a PSA or a five-minute uh, short learning segment. Um, increased use before an incident regarding preparedness, uh, tips, evacuation, shelter information, uh, public awareness, broadcasting more before a disaster and be a platform for updates at all times. Um, that came across a couple of times. But we saw a lot of focus on weather in the survey. And they want us to be very proactive in educating the community when it comes to weather and weather-related disasters and having the ability to push out automatically notifications in a severe weather event. Whether it's a way to update watches and warnings or education, they want to see that. And how can we try to get that across? And that's something I think should be pretty simple with some of the technology that's out there, but it's making it happen for them. There's also, and I was not aware of this, um, there is a FEMA um, DFS, uh, Department of Public Health promo and PSA toolkit that's out there. There are these resources that have been created and emergency management directors know this is out there and they would like to see us try to use it. What do emergency management directors feel are scenarios most likely to occur in their community that require them to educate the public? And I think most of these um, go without saying. There's a lot of focus again on weather. Um, flu outbreaks, water and gas main, um, school lockdowns, again we had that yesterday in Peabody. Um, terrorism showed up a few times and trying to educate the public. Um, power outages, uh, public not being interested in being non-concerned until the disaster happens and that's gonna be its own discussion point in a little bit and that's gonna be a real fun topic. But the list just continues. So if you're looking to try to reach your EMD and do programming, this is what they're saying are common scenarios. And again, I have copies of this for everybody that they can see. So then I said, well, if you could have your own show, what would you want your show to be on? And these are just a sample of some of the ideas that came back. Um, bringing items to a shelter. You saw that a few times. Um, trying to get the blood and reality of an incident out to people. Telling them, yes, this can be you. Um, focusing on utilities. Uh, this one I thought, the last two I thought were very interesting. Capturing rainwater for hygiene purposes. Somebody would like to see that as a topic on a show. And also cooking with canned goods. That if you stock up on all this, you can make a really good meal based on just stuff you, you can store. All right, we'll skip ahead to what are emergency management directors concerned about? Um, well, they're concerned about people's attention spans. <laughs> and you know, they, they seem to think that smaller segments that can go between shows would be more of an impact than somebody sitting down for a full 30 minute show. They don't know if people are gonna tune into a full show. So, 
my question to everybody is, can this be used in other ways? And I think the answer is yes. Um, if you have a smaller piece, you're able to share it on social media, again, creating that impact and getting it forwarded on, reaching more of the population. Um, confidence in community media centers. And I wanna spend some time on this because I think this part of the results is important. So how many people do they reach? They don't know. They don't know. How do they reach all the members of the community? Not everybody has access to it is a concern. So they wanna focus on word of mouth as well. And are they truly a valuable resource, somebody asked. And are they dependable? Because emergencies happen any time of day. If, if I'm working with my community media center, can I reach that person any time? And this one I thought was really interesting, that there needs to be a more fluid exchange of ideas between public safety agencies in the media, including local cable access, because we don't know all the media capabilities, so we don't even know what we're asking for. And then people don't think about going to community TV during an emergency, so why should we use it? Um, one of the things I do every year is I travel to the National Hurricane Conference, and I'm on their side of the fence in the back where I film amateur radio workshops. So I get to hear what media is saying, and this question comes up every year, and it came up in the survey too. So how can a community media center communicate risk to the public and then personalize that risk? Emergency managers want us to be able to take information, personalize it so that the people know, yes, this can happen to me, and make sure they can take action. That is a huge loaded question and a huge thing they're looking for. Does anybody have any thoughts on how we can communicate risk and personalize it? Uh, one of the things that our school district has done every year, uh, it's, it's kind of in the same realm, is, is uh, every year when it's like the, the high school graduation prom season, they do like the demonstrated car accident where, and, and they, they, they would be like the same program every year, and we've always like videoed it, and the kids all, they all watch it, and, uh, and the ambulance company and the police, they all get involved in it. But basically, they stage an accident, and then it's always, like, basically, it's like a drunk driving, and, and it's always, like, showing, like, the kid that you least expect getting them all the way in handcuffs, and, and then the hearse coming in and pulling away the body, and, and it's the same program every year, and everyone's like, who's going to be the one that's going to... So I, mean, it's, I think that's just one thing that they've done that, like, kind of demonstrates, like, it kind of personalizes it when it's, when it's, when you see somebody you know getting called away. Excellent. That is an excellent example. 